Sahara, bitch. If you're not like the rest of us, you're too cool to sit in your man cave, watch YouTube videos, play video games, and just watch shit online. If you're a person who likes to travel the world, discover places, fly left, right, front, back, U-turn, discover islands. If you love to do these things and you love the nature and just go and be their influencer life and post stories on your Instagram so you will make everyone jealous. This is one place you do not want to go. Today I came across this one video called the most dangerous island ever, the North Sentinel Island, where people for generations, thousands, tens of thousands of years have been living in this small island with not even, not even one technology they have seen in their lives. They are shut out from the entire world and no one is allowed to go there. The Sentinelese, who have inhabited this island since ancient times and are extremely aggressive towards outsiders. You go to this island, all you're going to hear is ooh, ooh, ha, 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 spear, Air, uh, arrow to your head, headshots, arrows which are even bigger than you. Why? Because... Well, they feel like it, I, I think. They're just very overprotective of their territory. This is the island over here. This is India. We got Thailand on the side of it. Malaysia, Singapore, Sri Lanka. In the middle, if you zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, the North Sentinel Island. It's even red around it. I, th I think they're giving us warning, but there's a perimeter over here where it is illegal to go to this island. Why did the Indian government make it illegal for people to go there with there's like an Indian coast guard around it and just stopping everyone who decides to go there? Because these people, these uh, traveling vloggers, vlog vloggers, they decide to, they want to go, they want to discover places, they want to get a, a viral clip, they go there, they get speared and I want to say 90% of the people who go there do not come back. But there were a few exceptions in the past couple of decades where this one man, he dedicated 24 years of his life to try to give them coconut water and some gifts. And after 24 years of attempting to give them God knows what kind of gifts, maybe new spears, maybe new arrows, they finally trusted him and they allowed him to be, to, to step on an island. Later, when a single anthropologist did the impossible, he made peaceful contact for the very first time. TN Pandit had been dropping gifts and coconuts to the island every one or two months since 1967, although for the first 24 years of doing so, the Sentinelese maintained their hostility. Now, I've seen people feed stray cats, but this is something... <laughs> Imagine for 24 years how dedicated you must be to go to this place and try to feed them and hope they won't kill you and realize that you're only here to help. Now, the population of this island is, they, they're saying it's around 15 to 500 people because no one can go inside. They're saying no one can go inside and just count how many people are you. Like what? They will go inside. Guys, line up all of you together. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Doesn't work like that. They're going to get killed. And... They don't even know what guns are, I think. They've never seen a gun in their life. They haven't, these kind of people in the island, they haven't even seen any technology in their life. They're completely shut out from the entire world. And something surprised me is all these people dead, all these people, these guys killed, right? And the police government, they're not doing anything about it. You know, like they have guns. They can easily go there, ta 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 ta, done. But I guess this is like the live version of a museum. You know, these people, I mean, they're just living their lives. They're not bothering every, anyone. People who just end up there, they just, they're just protecting their land, to be honest. But it's going to be really funny if you sneak into the island, like install a TV for them and see how, how they will react to it. In 1974, they took the first footage from them, even though, you know, they risked their lives, but they captured the footage first to see. The Sentinelese had never been sighted. We left gifts of coconuts, knives, lengths of cloth, a pig. After which the Sentinelese were caught on camera for the very first time. What are those moving shapes? Are they human? At last, the first glimpse of the Sentinelese. This tribe believes in total isolation. It will not tolerate a stranger. As is obvious in the footage, the tribe had no interest in making friends and rather buried half of the gifts they'd been given before shooting arrows toward the film crew. To be honest, I don't know if this is the most dangerous island in the world. I mean, there's cannibalism islands. These places where they will, hunt, they will not only hunt you, they will eat you. This is some, something different. They will uh, roast you like a barbecue. Then they will watch you. They will sing some songs around you, jump up and down. And that is it. These people, they will just give you like 10 meter arrows and you just instantly 
get anni annihilated or something now people accidentally ended up there some people crashed over there they thought you know this is a place they you know they can survive some people were lost at the ocean the sea they ended up there they were like finally land we are safe then they hit they got hit with that ooh, ooh, ah, ah, spear dead but a story went viral when an american citizen in 2018 uh, uh, travel blogger vlogger decided to visit this place what was the purpose of his visit to send jesus their way my friend it is not like going knocking on the door and be like do you love jesus you should love jesus it's not like going like that this is some island he learned it the hard way. We're going to talk about it. A blogger and Christian missionary. On his Instagram, John displayed his trips to countless different countries, including Mexico, South Africa, and Canada, each of which being documented on his Rugged Trail website. However, there was one location that John had his sights set on, which would make all the others seem insignificant, North Sentinel. John seemed to have been inspired by another missionary named Jim Elliott, who was killed in the 50s whilst preaching to a native tribe in Ecuador. Although, according to the head of the mission he was working for, John was significantly more prepared. All Chow's decisions, including his studies of sports science and training and working as a wilderness emergency medical technician, and classes he took in linguistics and cultural anthropology, were in preparation to share Jesus with the North Sentinelese. He was very well prepared for this moment. Very prepared for this moment, you know, going and speaking English to people who do not know that there's other languages out in the world. All they know is their languages and they have not seen a single piece of technology except the 1974 cameras so they have a few sense of what's happening out there but they don't know how the world is imagine someone comes to you and starts speaking english with clothes they're they're all naked by the way these people they only have you know they cover their uh, private parts and imagine an american goes to them and tries to you know tell them about jesus and tells them how these things are it, it doesn't make sense because they, they don't know anything out there in the world, right? It's like teaching video games to a chat. <laughs> they have their own religion. They have their own tribal. I don't know what they do. You know, they have their, their love nature with mother nature. With They have their own God somehow. And they're very protective, overprotective of their territory. But one thing I will never understand is these bloggers discovering dangerous places. For what? For for what? It's not for views. But as we go forward with this guy, this guy had so many chances to leave the island. They gave them warning. These uh, Sentinel people, they gave them warning. But he still decided to stay and still be like, Jesus loves you. This guy had a death wish. John posted this image to social media, showing that he was back in the nearby city of Port Blair, where unbeknownst to his family, he was planning his trip to what he called Satan's last stronghold, aka North Sentinel Island. On the 15th of November, 2018, only 25 days after landing back in the Andamans, John began a journal to document his trip to North Sentinel, with his first entry stating that a group of fishermen had agreed to take him to the island illegally. He goes there with two fishes in his hand and he is like my name is john i love you and jesus loves you jesus christ gave me authority to come to you now i'm not sure if john said it in a google translate and translated to island thing but i'm pretty sure the island people didn't even have a google translate so i guess john allah yarhamah rest in peace he was like if i tell them maybe they will know he said i began to panic slightly and saw them uh, string arrows in their bows and I picked half of the tuna and threw it towards them. They kept coming. I paddled facing them back. So he threw them food. He was like, I am friendly. But they still had the arrows pointed at them. So he just went back. He stayed there. This is the first time that he attempted to speak to them. But they were, they were not friendly. Second time he went, he tried the same approach. He started saying, Jesus loves you. He said, please, I'm coming in peace. I just want to talk to you. I want to discover this place and blah, blah, blah. Then he saw a woman and a child. They came towards him. The child took an arrow and he shot it at him, but he hit the Bible that he was holding close to his chest. The arrow hit the Bible and he survived. He started panicking. He started heading back, but he didn't go all the way back. He sat down in the in his boat. He rested. Then the next morning he was going to try again. <laughs> Allah yarhamah, rest in peace. But bro had a death wish. This was a sign from God telling him, bro, calm down. This, I saved your life. This is a sign from me to go back, live your life, try to spread positive ways in other ways. But this guy, 
I don't, I don't know, man. To Ireland now. I hope this isn't my last notes, but if it is, to God be the glory. Before going on to write a goodbye message to his family, reading Brian and Marilyn and Mum and Dad. You guys might think I'm crazy in all of this, but I think it's worth it to declare Jesus to these people. Please not be angry at them or at God if I get killed. And guess what? Third time is a charm. He went. He, no one knows what happened to him, but he never returned. God knows what they did to him. And he said, don't be angry at these people or God if I get killed. Well, the dad got unreligious after that, even though they were a very religious type of family. So what did we learn from this video? If you see people pointing arrows at you and they shot at you and you somehow survived it, do not go back to the same place again. If you see a haunted house and you want to go inside and discover it, don't. Leave it. Go back home. Say, Alhamdulillah, I'm alive. But yeah, I just thought it was really interesting, this whole island thing. Just want to share it with you. If you enjoyed the video, like it, subscribe it. It's for free, wallah. But yeah, take care of yourself and I will see you at the next one.